My name is Samir Mardini. I'm a uh, plastic surgeon at Mayo Clinic. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about facial paralysis and facial reanimation. So facial paralysis, we're talking about uh, either a weakness of the face on one side or two sides, or, or we're talking about complete paralysis. So uh, we have people that present to us with uh, either just a, 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 when you look at them, you can see that they're smiling, but one side is smiling uh, a lot stronger than the other side. And um, some people present with no smile at all on one side, uh, or even no smiles at all on both sides. So that's what we call facial paralysis or facial weakness or uh, facial paresis or, or th that type of uh, thing. Um, now, what causes this? We're either this, this happens either as a burst condition, so we have uh, children that are born with this kind of thing, and they, um, they're born in the first few months or within a year or so, the family starts to notice that the, the kid can't smile or is not looking the same on both sides or can't move both sides at all. In those cases, then we, the, the patients come to us and, and we look at uh, options for treatment. Um, other causes are things like stroke or um, a viral infection that can sometimes weaken the face or, or even paralyze it completely. Um, and other things involved, uh, accidents, uh, so trauma, things like that, that actually affect the, the facial nerve that, that moves the muscles in the face, uh, or after a tumor. Uh, sometimes there's a, a tumor or some kind of uh, cancer that's taken out, and uh, in the process of taken out, because it involves maybe the facial nerve, then that, that uh, the facial nerve is gone and the, the patient can't move their, the, their face. So the, the facial nerve, it involves different parts of the face. So we're talking about the, the brow, for example, you can lift the eyebrow uh, with the, the facial nerve uh, when it stimulates that part of the face. Uh, also eye closure, um, or mainly the smile. Um, and then we're talking about lower lip depressor, so bringing the lip down, or, or the neck muscles uh, that uh, are innervated by by the facial nerve, those all can be affected, either one of them or two of them or all parts of the face can be affected. And like we talked about earlier, we're talking about either it affects one side of the face or both sides of the face. Um, either way, this is really a devastating problem for the people who have this, because uh, you know you could be someone walking around with a normal smile and the next day you wake up and there's something wrong, or, or if your child has this, I mean, it's a big deal. Uh, but the good news is that for almost all types of patients and all ages, uh, we have a way to treat this, and, and often the results are really awesome. Um, so depending on your age and the type of problem that you have and the different parts of the face that are involved, uh, we, we find a, a, a treatment plan that's appropriate for you. And of course, uh, part of it has to do with what you're ready to undergo. Um, so there are, there are things that we do that are, that are non-surgical and there are things that we do that are surgical. Um, so before, before I start talking about the different types of things that we can do for it, um, I want to kind of let you know about what you would uh, go through if you, can, if you came to see us here at Mayo Clinic. So one of the things that, uh, one of the real strengths of Mayo Clinic is the team approach. And uh, we have organized a very nice team uh, to treat people, patients with this kind of problem. So um, when you first come in, you come in, you see the surgeon and uh, we'll have a nice discussion about, about what you have, we'll diagnose the problem, uh, we'll try to look into the different uh, um, reasons why you have this and try to dive into what, um, what your prognosis is. So if we think that this might get better on its own or, or if there are exercises that we can do to get you better without surgery, of course, we'll talk about that. We'll take some pictures, get some videos. This helps us sort of follow the progress uh, that you're having. And if we undergo, if we do some kind of surgery, then we'll look, we have things to compare the, the after surgery to the before surgery. Um, and, then, and then we send you to our physical therapist. We have a, we have a, a physical therapist that's heavily involved with our patients. And, and what she does is she looks at you and, and um, tries to figure out how much movement you have and uh, if she can, work on improving what you have already and to see if the, that can get you to where you want to be. There are tools that she uses like uh, exercises, uh, a muscle stimulator or nerve stimulator. These things, uh, she'll, what she'll do is she'll work on you while she's with you and then she'll send you home with some sort of um, 
homework to do at home, basically. But, um, and then after the surgery, if we end up doing some kind of surgery, of course, the physical therapist will help us optimize the results of, uh, of the surgery. We, we then will we'll look at uh, different specialists that we have organized for this, um, our team uh, to see which ones would be appropriate for you to see. So we have the uh, ENT specialists, uh, their uh, ear, nose, and throat surgeons, their head and neck surgeons. Um, they are experts in, in uh, diseases of the, of the face and facial nerve. And um, when, particularly when the facial nerve is involved closer to the, to the skull and when we have to go uh, deeper into the skull, they, they, uh, they are, uh, we, we, we need their help and they are, uh, they are great at that. Um, we, we then have um, a, uh, issues related to speech and swallow therapy. So some of, the, some of our patients, they end up having issues with their speech and their swallowing and, and we have a therapist that will work with them on that before and after surgery if there's surgery involved. Uh, we then have our ophthalmology team and the ophthalmologist that uh, sees you, because the eye sometimes is involved, uh, the ophthalmologist will assess your eye. They'll kind of look at it and see if there's anything that, uh, that's wrong with it. And, uh, and then if there's something that can be done to protect the eye, then they'll be the people that are involved in that. And often they're involved in surgery uh, and doing things, procedures that can help us protect the eye. Uh, we also have a neurologist, and the neurologist, they, uh, because the, their specialty is the nerves, they, and obviously when you have this kind of problem, nerves are affected, uh, we often ask them to get involved in, in kind of looking at the, the future and to see if we think that the nerve, uh, or if they think that the nerve can recover on its own, or how long we need to wait before we start diving into surgical procedures and, and things of that sort. Once we've, once um, we've had you see the, the appropriate specialist, then the surgeon will meet with you again. And at that point, we look at the, the overall picture. We look at all the recommendation from the different specialists that you've seen, uh, and we formulate a plan. And when, when I say that, I'm talking about formulating a plan that works best for you. So you may, uh, you may have a child that, that has a problem, uh, but you don't think that you're ready to undergo surgery or uh, to go into something major, then we can do some, some maybe some smaller things in physical therapy and things like that until you're ready or the child is ready. Um, or we can go straight for the treatment plan. So when, when we're trying to put together a treatment plan, we're looking at um, what parts of the face are involved, and we're looking at if we have one side or both sides uh, involved. Um, and then we are looking at doing things that are surgical versus non-surgical. So non-surgical stuff, we're talking about, uh, for example, Botox. Uh, Botox, as a lot of you know, weakens the muscle. So why would we want to use that in patients who have facial paralysis? Well, uh, when you have facial paralysis, uh, you have an asymmetric smile, so you're smiling really hard on one side and not, not at all on the other side, or maybe just a little bit weaker on the other side. We can use Botox sometimes to weaken the normal side, so you don't have that much asymmetry or that much um, difference between the two sides. Now, this of course is not such a nice solution, but it's a, a solution that kind of helps some patients who have a really tight pull on the normal side and the other side is not moving at all. Um, but our most powerful tool and uh, the surgery that we resort to the most in helping patients have a dramatic improvement uh, is uh, what we call uh, functional muscle transfers. So. One of, one of the options is to transfer the muscle that's in the temple. We call it the temporalis muscle. Sometimes we can turn that over and, and when you bite, then you can end up pulling on your cheek and you, you, you end up smiling. This we kind of save for, this one, this type of procedure gives a reasonable result, uh, but, but we end up saving it for patients who are older that can't tolerate a big surgery or patients who don't want to undergo a big surgery and they want to undergo sort of a a medium surgery and accept uh, a reasonable result but not an amazing result. Um, the type of surgery that we do that, that I think gives the most spectacular result is transferring a muscle from the leg uh, to the face. So what we do is we take the gracilis muscle, which is one of the muscles in the thigh, and we go through a small incision. We take the, the muscle, uh, the gracilis muscle, with the artery and vein that supply that muscle and the nerve that supplies that muscle. Now the nerve is the one that gives energy to that muscle so it can contract. 
we take those, uh, the artery and vein and the muscle itself and the nerve, we take everything up, we put the, the muscle under the skin in a position that can recreate a smile. So we position in the right place, then we put the artery and vein of the muscle, we, we suture it using the microscope and, um, and small sutures to the, an artery and vein in the, in the face, usually in the neck area. And what happens is you end up getting flow through that muscle and the muscle lives and it pinks up and, and, uh, and it, it basically is a transplantation. So we transplant the muscle from your thigh to your face. And because it's your own tissue, we don't have to use immunosuppressions or other things that are involved in, in other transplants. Um, and then we connect the nerve. And that nerve is really the, the source of energy to that muscle. The nerve can, that nerve we connect to either um, uh, branches from the other side of the facial nerve or we can sometimes plug it into a nerve on the same side of the face. And, and we can talk about that uh, more depending on your condition. But basically we have a source of energy for that muscle that's transferred. And what happens is uh, after a few months, uh, as, as we're waiting for that nerve to sort of give energy to the muscle, um, we, we do some physical therapy, some muscle stimulation, things to keep the muscle nice and healthy while we're waiting. And at about six months or seven months or something along those lines, depending on, the, on the, how long the nerve is, uh, we start to see a, a smile. So the, the muscle starts moving a little bit and the, the smile starts developing and within a few days you start to see uh, a smile and, and, and some symmetry in the face and for people who don't have any movement at all, it's a dramatic difference because you're starting to see, uh, instead of one side moving, the other side completely droopy, you're starting to see both sides smile and almost, often almost a perfect result uh, and, and that's such a gratifying feeling for for the patients or the child or the family and the and the surgeon as well and and that's really for us at least that's the joy in, in doing this type of surgery and seeing the 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 reaction and the dramatic difference between the before and after and the type of um, uh, emotions and feelings that are involved uh, for everybody the the whole team that we have here uh, for the patients, the, the family members, and, and the surgeon, it's, it's quite a dramatic uh, um, feeling.